hello everyone and welcome back to the channel my name is gonzi and today we are going to be reacting to another game theory video man this time called was fnaf's final mystery really that simple so without further ado let's react to this thing man let's go after nine years and countless Tala theories Tom a crying the child's boy. name and has Quata, been the found that's right on screen right now is the real name of fnaf 4's crying child and by the end of this episode you're gonna know exactly which one it is Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game Theory, the it's show that's heaven. just desperately just trying isn't. to keep up with the FNAF content train. It feels like there's been a lot, right? We had all that stuff from the 10th anniversary. We've had our first full entry into the Choose Your Own Adventure style book series. There's even a FNAF level in the new Funko Fusion game. I swear, if there is lore in this thing, I... Oh, there probably will be. Scream. Minor but lore. while though. I was busy just trying to keep on top of all of that, someone else decided that it would be fun to add one final slice to my already oversized mountain of law pizza fellow theorist and friend of the channel hyperdroid now normally another theorist posting a theory of their own doesn't particularly slow me down i'd normally finish writing what i'm doing and then i'd go back and watch that later but this one was different because he claimed he'd done the impossible he claimed that after years of speculation he'd finally found the name of the crying child <laughs> Bold claim, that bold. is a massive claim, bold, especially bold when claim. so many others had tried and failed in the past. But it wasn't all talk. He backed it up with some pretty solid evidence that the fan base seemed to love. We were inundated okay. with messages on our subreddit, Twitter, YouTube comments, all asking so us one cooked. thing. Is he right? And so I get it, Hyperdroid is a fantastic theorist. But this particular puzzle has eluded us for so long, to the point where most of us just thought it would never be solved. If he is right and we're all gonna start calling the crying child something other than the crying child we want to make sure it stands up to scrutiny don't want to sure. be caught backing the wrong animatronic horse so let's go through the evidence he's presented the methods he's used and see whether this new name holds water ladies okay. and gentlemen it's um huh can't use morty anymore can we and doesn't look like matt's gonna be interrupting me this time hmm gotta come up with something new Oh, I know. Leave your theories in the comments below. I'll pick my favorite in the next episode of Trash. Yeah, that's about right. I guess trash. that's what happens when I let yeah, yeah. Yossi pick the acronym. Let's give a trash take then, shall we? To understand how <laughs> Hyperdroid came to find this new name, we first need to recap where the mystery started. The Survival Logbook. Yep. After the release of FNAF 6, we got this book that seemed to just There's be a, a mystery there possible, that people just can't solve. It's the one of the, the biggest grid. lore clues in the entire series. And I really do mean that. Inside, we have three characters talking to us. Mike Afton writing in red pen, a ghostly spirit writing in faded text, and a final spirit altering the physical text of the book. Across several pages, the faded text wrote the words, my name. And on mm -hmm. one page, my name was written on a gravestone. Yep, this reflected stone, the fifth exactly. gravestone with no name that, that we found at the end of FNAF 6. Thanks to a Reddit user, D Powerful One, we realized that you could take the altered numbers on the pages where the words, my name, were found and use those as coordinates for the word search, giving us the name Cassidy, the fifth missing child. This, in and of itself, was a huge huge dub for the FNAF community, but it was kind of Dabbing chicken because there was another puzzle in this book that remained unsolved, the Foxy Grid. Mm -hmm. This grid had faded letters in the first few boxes, showing us that we needed to fill in the rest and likely meaning we needed more coordinates to figure out a new name, the name of the spirit writing in altered text in the book. Based on Cassidy's questions about the purple plastic telephone, psychic friend Fredbear, as well as a birthday party that was for you, all things seem to be pointing to this final spirit being FNAF 4's crying child. The Foxy mm -hmm. Grid was going to finally help us figure out the name of this character. The problem was, nobody could solve it. Matt was literally ripping his hair out for years over this thing. Some people tried to find the name in other places and then reverse engineer a solution. In Help Wanted, the FNAF 4 bedroom was called Norman Bedroom. So maybe Norman? Some people thought Garrett because that's Mike's brother in the recent movie. Some even thought it might be Gregory because he's designed in a similar way to the crying child. But none of them were able to link it back to the Fox 
proxy grid, and so it just felt inconclusive. A few Reddit users found the phrase, is Springtrap, using six Cassidy coordinates and six my name page numbers. This seemed to pair nicely with my name because it matched the FNAF 3 teaser. My mm. name is Springtrap, and implied okay. therefore that the ghostly text was actually Afton speaking to the crying child, whose name would therefore be Cassidy. But sadly, this solution ignores the seventh coordinate needed to make up the name Cassidy in the first place. And so by cherry picking mm. six of the coordinates, it kind of causes the whole thing to fall apart. Of course. Finally, the most simple and well-known of the theories was You're offered by Reddit user Wolfie Random 1740 letters to make a name because they you need one. The question it's not that actually Cassidy the solution. Was asking to the answers given by the crying Makes child in altered text. The party was for you. It was for me. What do you see? I can't see. Does he still talk to you? I can hear sounds. This gave them the letters E, V, and A. But they weren't really able to figure out the final letter. Another Reddit user, Godzilla813, 135 did manage to find a solution. They added up the tally marks to give them the final coordinates. Yeah, but that's a completely different to N and solution the to the, a lot the of previous really solutions you found. This name and thought it was of an course they did, because that's easy. Because you had to break the method on that exactly, final letter, it makes no it was sense. just too tough a moon drop to swallow. Enter Hyperdroid. He too liked the initial method posed by Wolfie, but he agreed that the final letter would need to follow the same method, especially as Crying of Child course. does offer a fourth answer. I'm scared. So, he took the same three answers to get the letters E, V, and A, but rather than skipping the fourth answer, he tried to match it to another one of the questions. On page 41, Cassidy asks, do you have dreams? Initially, that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense given the response, but underneath that question, Mike has drawn a picture of nightmare. The mm -hmm. nightmare animatronics came from William's experiments on his kids, and it's been theorized that this is what was used to make the crying child scared of the animatronics in FNAF 4. That means the crying child would not only know what this is, but would also be afraid of it, leading True. to him giving the seemingly non-direct answer, I'm scared. Taking the page number for that question, you can plug it into the foxy grid and get the letter D, spelling evad. Then noticing all the references the book had to reflecting, along with the random mirror next to the word search that's never been used Dave. for anything, Hyperdroid reflected oh, the answer, okay. giving them the crying child's name. Dave, D the mirror is D weird. The mirror is Dave. weird. Bro, it's called Everybody Dave! Lost their frontal lobes over this. But Hyperdroid wasn't done. Not only did he offer the initial solution, okay. he also went classic game theory on all of us and used some real world evidence. He calls out that Dave, or more accurately the full name David, was the third to fifth most popular baby name for boys between okay. 1970 and 1980, around the time that he would have been born. Mm. I love the fact he did this. Real world evidence is so useful for theory crafting. It can give you insight into things that the games or books might Man. otherwise not. And given how important Hyper this name is, I would be boy. surprised if Scott like actually done some real in the kitchen, bro. And what's more, Hell yeah, I think let's we go, can actually bro. expand upon Hyperdroid's idea here by getting a little more specific. So, let's give it a go. FNAF is commonly Utah. depicted as taking place yes. in Hurricane Utah. According to the United States Except Social movie, Security Administration, between in 1970 and 1980, David switched positions a few times, occupying either the fourth, the third, the second, or the first Damn, most popular okay. spots. Higher than what Hyperdroid presented. So we're off to a pretty good start. Although Thanks. there is one detail about the Aftons that we never really talk about that could change all of this. Ludwig actually mentioned it when he binged all of the FNAF lore with Matt on stream. Matt, why are oh, they, why are are they British? British? Why are they British? The kids that are raised in like Utah the and they sound British. When the Aftons That's speak, true. they sound British. Likely somewhere from England based on the accents. I'd like to say it's nice to have some British representation in video and the games, names. but I'm not William, really sure Michael, this is the Elizabeth. Like. Anyway, this detail Makes a lot of sense. A spanner into the works, as there's a chance that William named his kids based on what was popular back home rather than where they lived now. So, was David still a popular name in the UK? Thankfully, the answer is abso freaking lootly. More so yep. than in America, actually. According to the Office and of Dave National Statistics, in David the UK was as well. the most popular name for That's boys my in England uncle's from name. 1954 to 1974. He is also my godfather. After that, Shout between out to 1974 him. and 1994, mate. it only dropped down to number three. So still, this is looking like a pretty solid piece of evidence right now. Plus, we can actually take it a step further. Wanna guess what other name was in the top 10 baby boy names during the 70s? Michael. In the UK, Michael was the ninth most popular name for a boy, and in Utah, it was literally the number one name every year in the 70s, Damn. except 1973. The yeah, amount of Michaels, by bro, kids. in Utah. <sighs> of course, Jason had to ruin the perfect streak. Hashtag blame Jason, am I right? Regardless, Damn it, again, Jason. this seems to be lining up pretty well. But what about the final Afton child? Elizabeth. 
Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Well, exactly. she is also on these lists, although she's nowhere near as popular. In the UK for that time, she was sitting between 20th and 25th most popular name. Yeah, and but Utah, it's, it's still a very similar. popular Anywhere between name, 19th though. to 24th. That's it's not literally really the as queen. high as it was I'd literally like the for queen's it to feel like name, a bro. Connection. It isn't super bad. It would be way worse if the names were like 50th or 100th most popular, you know? But if this is being used as evidence for how Scott picked his names, then Elizabeth would likely need to follow that same her mother was and also reality, called she Elizabeth. then ended up being called something like Sarah or Jennifer, both number one names for the time period in the UK and Utah respectively. Therefore, while David was a really popular name between the 1970s and 80s, it kind of feels like a weaker connection. Maybe Scott just thought Elizabeth sounded more British because that was the queen at the time. Who knows? No need to worry though, because that wasn't the only real world evidence Hyperdroid used. He also mentioned the meaning of the name David. While it was a popular name in both the UK and the US, it's actually of Hebrew origin, meaning it is. beloved. Fun fact, Richard Thomas also King comes David. from a Hebrew word that means twin. I'm not a twin, at least as far as I know. Maybe you can David let me know down in the comments Goliath. if you think you found my long lost twin. For this theory though, Hyperdroid Very claims that the name. meaning does make sense. He connects the meaning of beloved to the crying child's brother Mike, and how his whole character arc is caused by killing his brother, showing us that his brother Dave was beloved by him. This is where I have to press X to doubt. While, yes, Michael does say sorry to his brother by the end of FNAF 4, the rest of his actions don't of really course say that not, he considered bro. his brother the beloved. Guy bullied he him to oblivion. Him, he actively puts him into an animatronic. He doesn't seem to care about him at all. Leave, After that, left his him as a pizzeria to be for hours. His father. Afton sent him down into sister location where he then learned about Elizabeth and the monster his father was, and so went on a quest to destroy him. Some of that may have come from the guilt of killing his brother, but I'm just not convinced enough to say that Michael considered his brother beloved. Now, that doesn't mean that I think the meaning David being beloved is invalid evidence at all. He may not have been beloved by Michael, but he was beloved by someone else. William. William didn't want his little boy gone. He didn't I'll want challenge that as well, bro. He needed to save him. I will put you back together. After he was We've dead, also though. Been for a long while that he killed Charlie in a drunken or emotional rage. The guy literally the was doing experiments, son, scaring the living crap out of them. About his kid if his son wasn't beloved. And by associating that meaning with Afton, other pieces fall into place for the other Afton kids as well. Michael once again comes from the Hebrew language, and it means who is like God. Typically, this is meant as a rhetorical question because there is no one like God, of but course. it could also be interpreted as a statement. Michael, who is like God. William is a man who has figured out power over life and death in this world. He sees himself as a God. He and does. Mike tells us himself that the fun time animal Animatronics confuse him for his father. They didn't recognize me at first, but then they thought I was you. He is like his father. He is who is like God. The same thing goes for the name Elizabeth. It's derived from the Hebrew name Elisheva and means my God is a promise. One of the only lines we get from Elizabeth before she becomes baby is her begging William to let her play with baby. Oh, Daddy, let me go to her. Didn't you make... Am I the only one who finds it extremely weird that for FNAF sister location, the all the marketing behind that game is about baby and how cool her design is, and she and we see her once the entire game we see her once, like in the scooping room. That to me makes zero sense, bro. Is to me is I I just don't understand it at all about. About that that's the one thing that I don't like about Sister Location is how much she was used in the material for the game. And we see her once, bro. Like what the hell? It's so weird. I'm the only Baby one who thinks that. Was made by Afton for Elizabeth. She's annoyed because she is now being denied the thing made specifically for her. The thing that was promised to her by her father, by the god of this world. After that, she disobeyed and got scooped. And so Afton made her another promise. The same one he made the crying child. I will he put sent you Michael back down together. into the bunker to put her back together. Three Afton kids, three Hebrew names, three meanings that all point back towards dear 
old dad. It's like poetry. It's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Interestingly, William isn't of Hebrew origin, it's mm -hmm. actually Germanic, but it also has an interesting meaning. Resolute protector or strong-willed warrior. He tried to protect Elizabeth. He was resolute in fixing and protecting the crying child after he died. And if you don't call surviving a spring-locking strong-willed, I don't know what else you'd call it. Sure. So from a thematic standpoint, the Empire, name Dave then, not does not nonsense. seem to work. Its meaning fits what we know of the character, and it ties into the same themes as the rest of the Afton family. It's at this and point, it though, I should probably address grid. the Orville in the room. Real world Orville. research is Shout great, him. and strong connecting themes are fantastic pieces of supplementary evidence. But that's the point, they're supplementary. If the mm. core evidence isn't there to back it up in the first place, then it don't mean squat. It all comes down to the actual deadly method that Hyperdroid too. used to solve this puzzle. And I'll be honest, when I first saw it, I was a little unsure. Using the faded text of the party was for you and what do you see make complete sense for the answers it was for me and I can't see. I can mm -hmm. hear sounds technically works with does he still talk to you, though it's not the cleanest, mm -mm. but I'm scared being a response to do you have dreams does feel like a bit of a stretch. The line only works because of the nightmare drawing on the same page, even though none of the other questions need context clues from the page. This feeling was also exacerbated when Hyperdroid pointed back to a Reddit post by the user Ecstatic Marzipan 7 from the GT subreddit. They came up with a solution three years ago, so way to represent the GT community. But when I took a look at the original post, they were receiving similar pushback. People were commenting the same things that I'm saying now. However, we theorists are nothing if not thorough. We always dot our I's and cross our T's. Rather than just say this answer feels wrong and throwing the whole thing out, I wanted to go back through the logbook and do a bit of my own reverse engineering. I marked down every page number where Cassidy wrote something in the logbook. I then used those page numbers in the Foxy Grid to find all the possible letters we could get to see if any of them gave us usable answers that we could then go back and pair with I'm scared. Two of them got ruled out immediately. What do you remember and do you miss them? Because they're on pages 20 and 70. You can't go zero down on a grid, so they're out. On page 56, we get what's your favorite ride, the carousel, but that spells Vave, so that's out too. <laughs> Three of Cassidy's questions do give us letters that technically work. Do you remember your name is on page 31? Do any of these toys look familiar to you is on page 42? And did one of these belong to you is on page 43? 31 gives us a C, 42 gives us a W, and 43 gives us a P. Using these letters, you can spell cave, wave, and pave. All real words, but not exactly Yeah, no names, connection. Especially considering the very normal Mike and Elizabeth. Although, page 43 isn't actually labeled as 43. It's one of the altered page numbers, and it shows 15. So I tried that too, back. and it gave me Yave, another dud. The ah. only time I got close to another answer was by using page 23, which ironically gives you an N spelling Evan. Was Wolfie actually right all those years ago? Yeah, no. If you thought <laughs> Do You Have Dreams made no sense with I'm Scared, I feel like Was Your Favorite Childhood Toy a Plastic Telephone is an even yeah. worse answer. It would then mean we haven't reversed anything either, and so the mirror in the middle of the book would also remain unused, which isn't that really is so ideal. weird. The last page to try was 83, where Cassidy asks, Is this song familiar to you? This gives you a T in the Foxy Grid, and I tried using this as both an alternative for I'm scared as well as I can hear sounds, just to be sure, but no combination of those letters made mm. a name either. Which means, by process of elimination, do you have dreams does kind of have to be the answer. If it's not, we also have to throw out the letters E, V, and A2 because we need to find an entirely new method to solve this grid. And at this point, I kind of feel like if there was another method, someone surely would have found it by now. I'm sure that some people still aren't going to be happy with this solution. For all the other questions, Crying Child was just responding to the words Cassidy said. But for this final one, you have to use Mike's drawing to get the full interpretation. As I've already said, that kind of breaks the method. Not as much as finding the end for Evan using the tally marks did, but enough that it doesn't feel satisfying. Except when you stop and look back, Scott 
actually did the same thing with the Cassidy puzzle. Think about it. At the start, we were using altered page numbers from pages with my name written on them. But as the puzzle went on, that changed. Suddenly, we stopped using altered page numbers and began using other altered numbers from the page, like 7 and 2 or 10 and 11. And in the book, they're not altered, they're not written down, they're just there. We were still following the my name part of the puzzle, but the actual number used for the coordinates was different. That rule was being broken. And yet, no one really batted an eyelid when that was pitched out. Why? Because we got an answer that made sense. Yes, the method was a little messy, but clearly it was the correct solution that Scott had planned, given he then went on to confirm the name Cassidy in his cancelled movie ideas. To me, this is the same situation. We finally have an answer that spells a name and follows the same kind yeah, of puzzles, true. even if the method is a little messy. Maybe Scott wanted to make the puzzles harder as they went on, or, you know, maybe he just isn't that good at planning puzzles to begin with. We theorists are so used Probably to that complex one. ciphers and ARGs that sometimes I think we expect everything we solve to be on that level, but in actuality, not everyone is. And so the simplest solutions can actually be the best. All that being said, what do I actually think? Is Dave the real name of the crying child? Well, even though a little messy, the solution does fit. It's a good solution, for sure. It an answer for the random mirror in for the middle sure. of the book. And it works thematically with all of the Afton children and their parts in the story. Is crying child's name Dave? For me, after spending days going back and forth, back and forth, looking at every side of the to argument, me it is. I have Until to say I see a better option, a resounding I'll take this one. Yes, yeah, I believe that same. Dave is the name of the crying child. So to Hyperdroid, Ecstatic Marzipan 7, and Shout any out. other FNAF theorist that came up Shout with this out solution to the solution over the years, they congratulations, they you did it. You solved the Foxy Grid, and you got the theorist seal of approval. Editor, cue the applause! <laughs> So yeah guys, there we have it, shout out Hyperdroid and Marzipan bro, you guys solved it, I accept it until I see a better option. And yeah guys, hope you had a phenomenal weekend, I hope you had an even better week, and all, don't forget, all glory to God as always, like the video, subscribe to the channel, all of that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next one, goodbye!